Yes, folks, once again, you guessed it, it is Sunday morning and it is time for the hook of the week. So let's go into our scrap bucket. So let's go into the scrap bucket and see what we've got. Now, I'll be honest, I've planned this one out a little bit so I know which piece I'm going for today. And I thought we would go with this great big heavy chunk and just get it out of here. Now this big hunk of steel, I think is a medium carbon steel. It's some sort of an agricultural machinery shafting that I picked up at a tractor place once. And it's going to be really tough to forge, especially if we do it by hand. This is inch and a half square bar that is about five and a half inches long or so. So that's about 40 millimeters square by 135 or so millimeters long. And I'm going to do this under the power hammer. I've been looking at this and I think what I'm going to do is make just a great big kind of a crane hook or chain type hook. Something I have no use for, but it should be a fun project. We'll draw the end out, make it essentially round, maybe kind of more oval shaped, and then we'll flatten the other end and punch a hole and we'll do as much of this under the power hammer as we can, but I think in the final bending and shaping that all happen at the anvil. So I apologize to those of you who think I do everything by hand at the anvil, but there's no reason to spend three hours working on this when I can do it in about 20 minutes under the power hammer. So before we go to the power hammer, I think I'm going to make this a little bit easier to handle. And I'm going to go ahead and weld a handle onto this so it's easier to manage under the power hammer. And that way I don't, and that way I don't have to worry about tongs while I'm working with it. Now because I'm going to be using the power hammer and it's loud and I'm forging a relatively large piece of steel, which means I'd like to leave the forge going the whole time, and that's loud, this will be another one of those videos that is going to be lightly narrated. I may try to narrate a little bit over the noise, but that usually doesn't work so well. If there's something really important to say, I'll turn everything off, do the narration, and then get it all going again. The first thing I want to do is draw out the hook end of this so that I've got a nice long hook bit. Then I'll probably cut my handle off. I'll do the other end, punch the hole in it. Then we'll worry about actually shaping the hook. I think this is what I want to go with for now. I'll draw this point out a little bit further before we're done. I want to leave this fat because this will be the bend point. This tool that I've been using is a flatter for use under the power hammer, but it, because of this lump that it has right across here, that allows it to adjust to tapers. So it's real good for smoothing these tapers out that I put in here, which is hard to do under flat dies. There's other tooling I could use and I could go to a different set of dies if I wanted to, but I'm gonna try and do most of this under the flat dies. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cut this off, turn it around, clean this up for where the hole is gonna go, then we'll punch a hole. So I've cut that off and ground the end a little bit cleaner. 
The next thing we'll do is come under the hammer and I'm going to round this up right here on the edge like this and try to make a round boss there before I punch the hole. Now it's coming out a little egg shaped and it's easier to get right at the end here at the anvil than it is under the power hammer. If it's all set up just exactly right, you can do all that under the power hammer. But this isn't the kind of thing I do very often. I also want to bevel the edge because ultimately I want that eye to be kind of round. Using the flatter to clean that up and that looks a lot better than it did so we're going to go ahead and punch the hole and once the hole's punched I think most of this is going to be done at the anvil at that point that's all the slug that we punched out. We lose very little material by punching a hole. The punch is H13, so I don't cool it. If it gets hot, I just have to set it aside and let it cool. The stuff I put in there was coal dust. It's just some little chunks of coal, and it helps keep the punch from getting stuck. And the main reason for working over the horn, instead of just leaving it as punched or just drifting it, is that I want to round it up some. I think it'll look better round. And I mean the stock round, not the hole. I'll probably knock the hole out of a round while I'm doing this. Once I get this round, the material rounded up, we can redrift it. And it should be a little larger then. Of course, this generally follows the square octagon round rule. You just want to knock the edges off till it's kind of octagonal, and then you can work on rounding it up.
without some kind of a die rounding this stock up at the eye section would be really difficult with the power hammer. That's pretty much what I'm going for there. I think we'll find a big drift and we'll drift this again. So I've got about the biggest drift that'll fit through my hardy hole. If we go bigger than that, we can go over to the swedge block to drift it, but I don't think it's going to need to be any bigger than this. Now if I had a short drift that I could use with the power hammer and make it go into that same bolster, this would be a one heat job. But this does give me some opportunity to clean up my I hear a little bit. And I think we're okay there. I think that's where I'm going to leave that. So next we'll turn it around and we'll finish the, the actual hook part. I'm going to start just by cleaning up this pointed end. It doesn't need to be really pointy, just not so blunt. It's one of those that you can kind of see another shape in this. This could be a big eye bolt if you needed to make a big eye bolt for something. I think I'm pretty happy with that point at this stage. The next thing I want to do is get it hot right through this thick section. That's where I want most of my bend to occur. And that then is where we're going to start our bend. I was afraid this stuff was going to be pretty stiff to bend. It's bending quite nicely. Now this fat spot, I actually want to taper it out this direction a little bit because quite frequently these hooks do taper there. They're fat in the middle but wider. I assume that makes them stronger and stiffer. I think we can just do that right here at the anvil. In doing this, you're drawing out this outer edge, and that actually helps close the hook up a little bit. It looks like we can close it up just a little bit more.
And I think the very last thing I want to do as far as shaping this goes is going to be to offset this ring a little bit so that it pulls just a little bit straighter. Most hooks like this, the ring seems to kick to the back. I'm going to put the drift back in for this. And try not to hit the same place so that I'm not just creating a flat spot. And it's certainly moving, but not very fast. Well, the drift fits now anyways. This is a little hard to hold on to. None of those projects I don't have the perfect pair of tongs for. I'm kind of liking what I see there. I think I'll go ahead and put my touch mark on there while that end's hot. Now by putting something through the hole on this, I can kind of get an idea of how that hook will hang. And I think I'd like it to close up just a little bit more. So I'm going to heat up the hook part again. You do want the hook and the eye to be in the same plane this way, so make sure that you double check that. It's looking pretty good. I think to finish this one off, I'm going to really wire brush it good with a power wire brush. And I'm doing this while it's still hot, so it really leaves a very nice finish on it. Now, if you're going to be using something like this with rope or webbing slings, make sure there's no sharp spots. This is still too hot for me to run my finger in, but before I call it done, I'll run my finger around inside there and make sure there's nothing sharp. Die grinder would probably work for that as well. Same thing with this. If it's going to sling a rope or something else, make sure that's good and smooth. The last thing I'm going to do with this is just put a little beeswax on it. It's perhaps still a little bit on the hot side. So we'll let it cool a little bit more. Well, I think it's safe to say this is the biggest hook I've ever made and certainly the biggest piece of material I've ever started with for a hook. I've used longer material, but never anything inch and a half square before. This hook ended up weighing, if I can get it to stay on the scale, three pounds, 1.3 ounces which apparently is about 1.4 kilograms. Now the length of the hook from the inside of the hook where you'd actually be able to hang something to the center of the eye is six and a quarter inches. So that's about 170 millimeters. But in any case, it was a fun exercise under the power hammer. You get to see some of the versatility of using flat dies under a power hammer with auxiliary tooling. You don't always have to have specialty dies. And this is certainly something I wouldn't tackle without a power hammer or a hydraulic press. I only did this because I have those tools available. As we go through this project, the challenge is to use what's in the bucket. And the way I approach that challenge is based on my aesthetic, the things I have seen in the world of blacksmithing over my 36 years that I've been blacksmithing, 
my personal experience in shaping material, and of course, the tools that I have available in the shop. If you have different experiences, you've been exposed to different things throughout your blacksmithing career, you have a different assortment of tools, you're not going to approach these the same way, and you're probably not going to make the same hooks. If I had been thinking ahead, I probably would have fished into that bucket and gotten rid of this great big piece of steel, because in some ways it's a little bit silly to be making a hook like this. But it is Sunday, and it is a hook, so this is the hook of the week. I've talked on long enough. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.